and fallout of the governorship primaries of the APC and the PDP. Some opponents disagree with the process in several states of the Federation, where others are now threatening lawsuits. From our president, Gulak Jonathan has opposed the Section 8412 of the Electoral Act, asking it to be expunged from the law. Hello everyone, welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channel Television. I'm Sean Joaquin Baloye in Abuja. Let's begin tonight by letting you know what a former president, Gulag Jonathan, is saying is criticized the National Assembly over some of the provisions in the 2022 Electoral Act. The former president believes the laws made by the current Assembly, National Assembly, appears to target individuals and not for the good of their country. He has asked the Section 84, Sub 12 of the Electoral Act be expunged. I believe that the best way for us to make our laws is to institutionalize democracy. This section, this 84 or so, that is a controversial section that I've been To me, if you read through that law, 80% or more of that section have nothing to do with us, supposed to be expunged from the, uh, the Electoral Act. Because the National Assembly cannot make a laws and lock up all the political parties together. Political parties must have the leverage of doing certain things differently. From our president, Gulak Jonathan. We're now right activists and Nigerian senior lawyer, Mr. Femi Falano, has demanded the immediate resignation of the governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, following his link to partisan politics. The senior advocate of Nigeria insists that the nation's electoral umpire cannot keep election materials under a politician's watch, vowing that relevant groups are taking the issue up legally if President Muhammad Buhari fails to relieve MFLA of his sensitive position. Advocate Femi Falano there. Tonight, you need to really, really uh, get a cup of water if you're thirsty or if you need, uh, if you think anything will distract you, if you need to get water because tonight is going to be yet a lift in the conversation from yesterday that you saw in analyses of the state of the race. And of course, we shall also be looking at uh, those who have emerged, they are winners and they are losers. We show you their faces tonight across the state of the Federation. Now, the PDP and the APC, uh, most of them have concluded their governorship primaries. Now we know those who will be going into the race. Now, before we get to talk about all of that, I also have one of the frontline presidential aspirants that will be joining me tonight on the program and on the issues that have been raised as far as the race is concerned. But before we get into all of that, let's check out some of your political roundup stories.
A governorship aspirant of the All Progressives Congress in River State, Senator Magnus Abe, says he will not accept the outcome of the party's governorship primary. Senator Abe at a media briefing at Freedom House, his campaign office in the new GRA of Port Harcourt, says the process that produced the delegates for the primary was not credible. The indirect primaries being conducted today by the former Minister of Transportation and his cronies in the All Progressives Congress in River States clearly does not meet that standard. Supporters of Vice President Yemiu Shibaji under the umbrella of PYO Global Partners have launched a crowdfunding portal for his presidential bid. A statement by one of the trustees of the group, Mrs. Chinwe Ongudiegu, described this as an unprecedented move in campaign financing in the country. The immediate past Minister of Niger Delta Affairs and the presidential aspirant of the All Progressives Congress, Mr. Gotu Akpabiu, has promised to revamp Nigeria if given the opportunity to become president. Mr. Akpabiu made the promise in Calabar Cross River State while canvassing for the support of delegates in the forthcoming primary of the party. The third thing we'll do is to tackle the issue of the economy and building infrastructure. We must revamp the economy, take it from where this president has stopped to the next level. The presidential aspirant of the All Progressives Congress, Nicholas Felix, is canvassing for votes of delegates in Nazarua State, promising to tackle insecurity if given the chance to fly the party's presidential flag. Mr. Felix told APC delegates in Lafia that youths will make up 80% of his cabinet when he is voted into office in 2023. So as youth, we must be active in this game. This is going to be a fight. If you think 2023 is the end of it, you're joking. We will not stop until we get there. The convener of the Lagos for Lagos movement, Mr. Olajide Adediron, has won the governorship primary election of the People's Democratic Party in Lagos State. Adediron, also known as John Dog, polled 679 votes to beat his closest rival, David Vaughan, who got 20 votes. I promise you, I am going to use this ticket to unite Lagos PG so that we can win Lagos for Mr. Ladia Debutu has emerged as governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party. At a parallel governorship primary held at the Olusha Gunabasanjo Presidential Library in Abiyokuta, the Ogun State Capital, Adebutu polled 711 votes by delegates from 20 local government areas to defeat his opponents, Jimmy Lawal and Shogun Shomi, who scored zero. However, before the commencement of the exercise, Jimmy Lawal disagreed with the delegates' list. Meanwhile, at another venue in a parallel primary, Mr. Shogun Shomi emerged winner of the process. We pray God in His infinite mercy will grant us the grace and strength to cross the remaining hurdles so that we will be enabled to bring good governance to our state. Thank you so much. Stay with me, everyone, because it's going to get more interesting tonight as we unveil some facts and figures that will determine, uh, that will shape the race. Tonight, we'll be continuing the analysis of the state of the race, and I'm being joined again by data analyst Baba Jide Ogunsanwo, who joins us live here in Abuja City. Thanks so much, Jide, for joining us tonight again. Sure, pleasure, um, what we have on our plate tonight uh, from looking at um, the PDP and the APC, we said that's what's going to be our focus tonight. But basically, it's just about two days before the People's Democratic Party will go to, um, to the stadium in Abuja where they will be electing uh, the presidential candidate of the party. But what is significant for you in that race? That's the venue, you're right. Um, that's where they will be electing the venue of their candidates. That's where it's expected that you will also be. be. Definitely. Um, but here's why all this is important. If political parties were, if the gender of political parties were female, then we'll say, we'll call this season the political conception period because this is nine months to that big month in February where we'll, come, we'll see more voters coming out to, to decide what will happen. But there are two ways we could look at this, and this is the way to look at it in a balanced way. To look at what happened in PDP in 2018, look at what happened in the APS, APC as well, and then we can look at what is currently going on now that it's four years past. So let's start with the PDP. Let's take a look at what happened in 2018 when they all went to Port Harcourt for the PDP presidential primaries. Mm -hmm. And if we focus on that, here's what you notice. In 2018, 3,153 delegates determined who won that election. Yes, it was won by Atiku. In coming second was Aminu Tambua, the governor of Sokoto State, and third, Bukola Sarkri. In all, 
what we see currently is these top three candidates that came out top three in 2018 are still in the race. Every other candidate, excluding these top three that were in the PDP's Port Harcourt Convention, are currently not vying for the number one office. So that's interesting. We can clearly see the top three in 2018 are still interested in the race in 2022. But tonight, I would like us to look at the 2022 PDP election based on three ways. Looking at it per the delegates in each local government, looking at it per delegates in the zones, and then looking at what the major stakeholders, the power blocks, want to do. So let's start by looking at what exactly will be going on across the six geopolitical zones, because that is where the 811 delegates are spread. And if we take a look at that, here's what you find, Sheung. Clearly, not all zones have the same number of delegates. What the PDP has done is to give to have one delegate across all the 774 local government, and then in each state, there will be an additional delegate for the physical challenge, and including a delegate, an extra delegate from the Federal Capital Territory. So in all, we see that the Northwest Zone is a zone that has most of PDP's delegates. Is a, is a, is a political power block of Nigeria. Well, that's, that's a po political power block. Where and the, that is where, where the numbers are. That is where the numbers are. And later, when we go into the zonal zone analysis, we'll see why these numbers shown are important. Number two is the Southwest, followed by the North Central, mm -hmm. the South South, then the North East. And finally, we have only 100 PDP delegates from the Southeast. And that's what really makes this interesting. Only 811 delegates for 2022 versus 3,153 delegates in 2018. So clearly, even those that want to use money to influence these delegates will make it a bit, will, it's, it's definitely going to be a tougher, tougher um, season for you to just want to use money alone to influence the decision of these delegates. These delegates in 2022, I refer to them as super delegates because they will really influence and determine what will the, the PDP um, aspirants will do. I mean, uh, we've been highlighting right here on China's television the importance of the delegates. They are the bright, of um, the beautiful bright of these political parties. But beyond that, they, they've uh, been in the shadow. A lot of people don't know who these people are. We've tried as much as possible to break it down for people to know who these people are. They are represented across the different uh, local governments, uh, representing the different local government. But it's also important that they know that whatever they decide is what the nation will get. So they should not be under the illusion that they have Nigerians at large to blame. Nigerians should blame this delegate if they should wrongly no matter what political party they belong. Yes, um, Nigeria should blame these delegates. You're right, Sean, but we need to ask ourselves who will influence these delegates. And so let's look at the delegates per zone and then look at which candidates from the PDP are in these zones. It will give us an inclination as to who perhaps might win PDP's race. And if you look at the delegates per zone, here's what you find out currently. In the Northwest that has 193 delegates, Sean, the PDP currently has only one candidate, the governor of Sokoto State, Amin Tambua, is the only candidate in that zone that has 193 delegates. It gives you an inclination of what could happen in the Northwest. Mm. It's from that zone, it's but it doesn't zone. own the, de the delegates. It doesn't own the delegates, but it's the only candidate of the from PDP that from that zone. Plus, emotionally, they might be uh, inclined to him. Yeah, yeah, emotionally, they might be. But don't forget, I have few people that have made inroads into the Northwest. But here's what makes his own case even special, Sean. One is Aminu Tambual is the only PDP governor in the Northwest. And two, Aminu Tambual is the chairman of the PDP Governors Forum. Now, let's look at what's going on in the Southwest. Two candidates, Ayo Faoshe and Dele Momodu, 143 delegates. The third zone that has the most number of delegates is the North Central. And we Dele, Dele Momodu belongs to the Southwest, and he also has one leg also in the South South. His father is from Edo State, his mm. mother from Oshun State. So <laughs> and, that, and that takes us you know, into what exactly is going on in the South South. In the South South, we have three candidates all bidding for the 129 delegates from the South South. And then hopefully they will be trying to create strategies that allows them to use their relationships to get more delegates across other zones. In the Northeast, we have 
Atiku Abubakar, Bala Mohamed, and Ayatuddin. Well, here's the challenge with the South is shown, and I want you to listen carefully to this. The South East has the least number of delegates, 100, based on their number, number of local governments. However, the South East has the most number of PDP aspirants. In other words, it gives you a bit of an understanding why the former, Peter, um, former governor of Anambra State, Peter Obi, might have taken a decision to leave the PDP because it comes from a zone that has the least number of delegates, yet has the most number of PDP presidential aspirants. In other words, Shun, it was going to be easier for Peter Obi to get water out of the rock than to win the PDP election. As it stands right now, it does seem, looking at the number of delegates, how they are spread across the zones, and where the candidates are coming from, it does seem that there is a white horse staring at us from the Northwest. I, I know in the coming days, there is still more for us to do because we have plans to actually now break it down further to let our viewers know where the strength of some of these uh, aspirants are. But not today, but let's go ahead with uh, the, the analysis. Yes, but we could, we could also look at the strength of the aspirants, especially looking at the major power blocks, mm -hmm. looking at what Neo Samwiki could do, looking at what the other governors could do. And that is where I would want us to finally end the analysis and outlook of what could happen in the PDP primaries. And let's take a look at the major power blocks in the PDP today and how they might want to use their strengths in the next 40, 72 to 100 hours. And if you look at that, what you currently see is that list that clearly lets you identify that there are four PDP governors that are currently wanting to get that office. Um, Tambua from, from the Northwest, we see from the Northeast, we see Bala Mohamed. Mm -hmm. We see from the South South, Governor Wiki and Governor Udom Emmanuel. And in all, why this is interesting is that you see that there are two PDP Northern governors and two PDP Southern governors that are in this race. The difference between the North and the South is that the two PDP Southern governors are currently from the same zone. In the final outlook for the PDP, there are three zones that will determine who will likely be the PDP presidential candidate. The first and most important zone is the Northwest, where you have 193 candidates, 93 delegates, and you have Aminu Tambwal as the only PDP aspirant there. The second is the North Central, where you have 130 delegates. However, you don't have any PDP governor. Want, sorry, you, only, you have um, um, Bukola Saraki mm -hmm. wanting to pick that ticket. And then from the southwest, the southwest region across the southern block has the most number of delegates, 143. So for all the delegates, all eyes on these three zones, the northwest, Tambual, the north central, Saraki, and what will happen with those delegates in the mm -hmm. southwest. Yeah. Because the southwest has the most number of delegates looking at relative to the other southern blocks. Interestingly, uh, these de uh, aspirants have been going around the country to Kajo and who the, the delegates to sway them to vote for them. But do you have anything on the APC? For, for the APC, that is um, more complex but even more interesting because it's still not clear if the APC will go with the direct primaries, the indirect, or the consensus. So what we can do with the APC is to look at what currently is going on and who are their candidates especially looking at it from where they're candidates from the north and where they're candidates from the south. So I'd like us to take a look at what the shape of the APC's candidates look if we look at it relative to even their, their governors. Shown as of today, the APC has governors in 23 states. What you have on the left table are those states in the north where you have 14 APC governors. And what you have towards the right are those nine states where you have the APC governors. Well, here's the fact, shown: Across the 14 northern states that we have APC governors, there's only one APC governor that is in the race. Again, I repeat that. Across mm -hmm. the 14 states that the APC governs today, only Governor Yaya Belo from Kogi State represents the north among the governors. However, across the nine states that the APC currently governs, what you have is we have three candidates. We have Governor Kayode Fayemi, we have Governor Dave Umayi in the race, and we have Governor Benedict Ayade. In other words, Shem, 
if the northern governors choose to go with their northern colleagues, then it looks like a one-horse race for Governor Yayabilo. However, if the southern governors choose to go with their colleagues in the south, they will have to make a choice between Governor Karade Faemi, Governor Dave Umayi, and Governor Benedict Ayade. The challenge is it still remains unclear if the APC will go with the direct, the indirect, or the consensus option. So here's what we perhaps could do in finally concluding this analysis show, is to look at what have these candidates proposed to do. What we know is the APC will most likely still have some sort of screening for, for their candidates, up to 23 candidates. But what sort of discussions will be going on in this screen? Now, what sorts of things should these delegates consider when they want to make their choice, if it's the delegates that will be making these choices, which is what I want us to, to focus on next, is to look at from the north, um, what sort of manifestos and what were the areas these APC candidates focused on, and looking at it from, from the south. Interesting, and interesting days ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Judy, for, for your time tonight. Um, much uh, more to chew on, especially with the kind of intensity. I'm not sure we've seen so much intensity in any presidential race in this country. But thank you so much for what you do. So much intensity. If we had some more time, I'll have shown you the manifestos of the APC candidates from the northern region of the country, and then to look at if what the differences are between those manifestos. Can we do that in 60 seconds? Yes, we surely can. Let's look at the, quickly look at the presidential manifestos, key areas from the APC presidential candidates from, from the north, and then we'll quickly look at it from the south. Okay, great. Let's go ahead. From the north, we're looking at 19 candidates. If we take a look at that and we can pull that up, what we see is among those candidates, when it comes to equity and accountability, um, the vice president, um, the, female, the APC female candidate, Uju Onaye, and Tunde Bakare score quite high when it comes to equity and accountability. When it comes to wealth creation and management, you have a lot of candidates that score relatively high. When it comes to education, the highest scorer there is the, um, the vice president. When it comes to security, Governor Kaede Faemi and Ogbona Onu. When it comes to power and industrialization, the vice president and Bola Tinmuk scores high. And in final analysis, let's look at what is going on among the candidates from the south. That is for, for, for the northern candidates. And if we look at the key areas of the candidates from the north, which we have Governor Yaya Bello leading, we have um, this, um, the Senate President Ahmed Lawan, we have Mohamed Badaru, and we have Ahmed Yerima. Across the candidates, the APC's candidates from the northern region, what we see is that when it comes to their ideas on equity and accountability, Governor Yaya Bello and Ahmed Lawan seem to have a tie there. However, when it comes to wealth creation and management, the ideas of Governor Yael, Yael Bello in his manifesto seems to be clear when it comes to education, security, and industri industrialization as well. Governor Yael Bello's 119-page roadmap, as he's put it, um, is a bit more, in fact, some, in, in some areas, especially when it comes to security, his plans, when we look at it relative to the other plans of the APC candidates from, from the North, is more, more detailed. So clearly, um, the delegates have this to consider Candidate APC candidates from the north, APC candidates from the south. Mm -hmm. But perhaps there's one delegate nobody is talking about and how much influence it will have on this delegate. A delegate that is not just an ordinary delegate. I'm talking about the role the president will play. It's in. actually not a voting delegate. It's not a it's, voting it's delegate. It's going to be an observing delegate based on uh, the electoral law. Well, he's the, he is the voting delegate that and is stronger it, yeah, than even has... the, the voting delegate. <laughs> Thanks so much. A, a non-voting non delegate. But has perhaps a more overriding power than the voting, all of voting the delegate. Thanks interesting so days, for, interesting time for the next Absolutely. 100 hours. We take a break, everyone. And when we return, Governor Yinsom Wiki of River State joins me next. And we shall be looking at the issues trailing the conduct of the primaries and looking ahead to the PDP presidential primaries also. Join us again, everyone. So much everyone welcome back to the program in a matter of days precisely on the 28th and 29th of may 2022 the people's democratic party will be deciding on who becomes its flag bearer for the governorship uh, um, uh, primaries of course you now know 
a lot of those who have emerged, the winners, have not been identified across the different states, from Agbu to Amadu to Ashiro, Caleb, Dauda, David, Ibrahim, all across the states of the Federation. The winners have emerged, and of course, in the APC control states, uh, Governors uh, Sanwolu uh, and Governor of uh, Ogun State has also emerged in their difference. So we we'll give you all of those information right here on the program. Let's get right into it, uh, uh, everyone. I'm now being joined by one of the frontline aspirants and governor of River State, who had sometimes served as a Minister of State for Education and a former local government chairman, a lawyer, and a presidential aspirant of the PDP. Governor Yin Song Wike joins me live here in our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. For Thank you, Jim. Us. Thank you very much. Let me first and foremost get your reaction to your friend, uh, Mr. Peter Obi. He's the patcher from your party. He's dumped your party. How does that come to you? It's not surprising to me. And that's what I've always said. Um, when I go around to say, you have to be careful. Uh, those of us who have joined the party since 1998, who have never left this party, who believe this party is in our blood. It doesn't matter what uh, problems we have in the party. We have to be inside it to settle the problems. So, uh, Peter will be leaving the party. It's not surprising to me, and I know, but he does. There's no way he would have won the presidential uh, primary. Forget about what uh, his uh, DG, Dr. Kube, said about money and this. You know, these are the things I talk about. Uh, uh, you don't think he can win? Win what? The presidential primary of the PDP. How would he have won? I went to another and told you that don't waste your vote on him. He will win. Since Peter will be left, PDP. I mean, left uh, Abga. First, left as a governor. Well, we never won an election in the uh, number. Check it. But that is not the issue. The issue is that look, at that level, there must be integrity. There must be character. How can a man who has gone to all okay, virtually states to tell them? Uh, he's been a trader, how his family have been trading, how everybody should support him, how he owns one shoe, how he does not allow, allow anybody to carry his bag, all those kind of things. Three days to the primaries, you see, I've led the party. Now, from what I read from the social media, he had met Kwakwaso, either to join him in the NNP. So, you don't ask him, what was going to be there? Kwakwaso wants to be president. So would he not say, okay, I want to be VP to Kwakwaso? Which is not a plan. I have no, all I tell people, integrity, character, is very, very important in what we do. You see how people talk about when they say, for example, Shewu, look, you were in a social primary school, secondary school, see what you did, see what you put, oh, why are you being personal? It's not about personal. In, in America, we had sleepless night to watch the debate of the Republican uh, Convention, of the Democrats. And you hear where they talk to each other. You, you can't, the Niger Americans cannot allow this country to be with you. Look at the kind of person you are. You went there, went there, went there, went there, went there, went there said, sleeping, uh, Joe, but you can't, we cannot allow you. We only talk about Hillary Clinton. Look, you, can, you are not stable enough to be able to carry America. So when we're talking about character, it's an issue. You can be the best economist, but you don't have character. No integrity. Um, your, cha your challenging is integrity and character just based on the fact that he left the PDP. Not just that, that. No, look. Just look. A vice presidential candidate of the 2019 election but what if he sees things differently now? What does he see? He doesn't see that he, your, your he, party is... He did not see it uh, for how many years now? Just 72 hours. 72 hours. It's not his seen. He never saw for how many years now? The party gave you a presidential, a presidential ticket. That was said, some people can become presidential candidates. And they'll still abandon your party. Mess you up. And, and I, I, I've thought, delegate, look, you must be careful. 
Who are those that made people to lose election? Can you trust them that if you give them the ticket, they will not be funny enough to do something that will preach PDP? Your, your party is having some issues. I mean, yeah. the, I, I like to show you this letter yes. uh, that surfaced and uh, we show what INEC said about mm. the primaries. And we're seeing a lot of issues happening across the country. Yeah. Take a look at what INEC said and yeah. wrote about how the elections, I, I'm, I'm very sure you must have seen this. I mean, it's like a booby trap yeah. is waiting for your party. Yeah. It's not our party. What I know from what I saw, all political parties, you know, in this country, this impunity, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. You know, it's very painful. Very, very painful. What Anek has come to say, listen, by Section 84.1, this is what the Electoral Act has said. And in line with that, we must strictly comply to it. Therefore, be warned. That's what Anik has said. Therefore, be warned. Everybody believes nothing will happen. I have my way. He has his way. So, we do all we can do. But your party in Kano, yes. your party in Anambra State, your yeah. party in Imo, yes. they're having issues that's the relating to what no, Ineke has That's what I'm trying to say. What INEC has said, we have watched what's going on in all the political parties. And we want to let you know, we will strictly comply with what the law says. Okay, you said I'm my party. I won't because, of, because it's my party. And then you don't comply with the rules. You don't, you don't obey the law. And I you're an, an opposition party. And Anak was on this program, and yes. he made it clear. Yes. Uh, uh, last Sunday. Yes. That, look, anybody that is in, in terms of location where yes. you specify, yes. uh, in terms of the delegates uh, that will go for the that party risk yes. being having their primaries being annulled. Yeah. Do you, as a lawyer, yeah. do you fear that your party might have issues? Because you what, know this thing is a dovetailing what, effect. No, as a dovetailing effect. First of all, let me talk as a party committee party member. I don't want my party to have a problem. It will be a crisis for the first time in my party that we will not have states where we are feeling candidates. That is first of all. Then as a lawyer, I believe, not just believe, it is right, you must comply with what the law says. So if you don't do that, then you don't have any iota of commitment where the party is. Say for example, and I've always said it. Secondus was the national chairman for my state, right? And I said, look, you are not doing well. So if, for example, now, the National Working Committee are not doing well, for example, I would say, look, you cannot help this party. How would you? Look at the letter I next wrote to all the political parties. Is there one? Be careful. Be careful. Because, you see, what was parties do is that they stay in their offices, generate lists, and send to INEC. And then INEC said, look, we're not going to do that again. No. Everything is as we monitored it at the world, at the local government, and at the state. You can't come and give us lists. No. Look at the whole what has happened in those states. The Court of Appeal has set aside whatever has happened. What happened? In those states, INEC monitored primaries or congresses, as the case may be. Some people went somewhere and wrote the list. And under the new Electoral Act of 2022, the state high court do not have jurisdiction to even inter interfere in it. You understand me? So what the governor's people did was to go to the state high court and obtain an order that their own is right for one. But this today, the court of said, <laughs> you don't even have the power. The, the state government can, the state high court cannot. So the point I'm trying to make is that the party should, as an opposition party, obey the rules. We're not in the ruling, we're not in the ruling party where you want to think that oh, we're in government, anything can happen. No. Obey. Simple, comply to simple rules. Then opposition. You are not willing to take over government. We cannot be in opposition. And you are not obeying 
or complying with the law. I hope your party is listening to what you, I mean, from, from what you're saying, if you are, a, I mean, as a chieftain of the party and yeah. as a sitting governor in the party yes. and as an aspirant, you have highlighted some of these things. We see, we have said on this program that a lot of the political parties may have problems. Let me take you to the issue of the presidential primary. Yes. Are you ready? If you do it today, they will announce me as a candidate. What gives you that confidence? Why not? Who among the aspirants will be? You see, it is very clear. There are I more want... experienced people than you. No, now who? Atiku Abubakar. How? Bukala Saraki. How? Two-time governor Bukala Saraki. Yes. Atiku Abubakar, former vice president. Yes. Our chamber of empire, I no, how? Our chamber of local government, that's the grassroots. Our chief of staff was a minister and a governor. Not just a governor, a governor everybody knows. This is where he stands. A governor where everybody knows, he says this and he's going to do that. And that's what the country requires today. Somebody will say, look, we can't continue the way we have been. We must move on. You don't need to like me, like I've said. I don't know who's worse, but how? It's not, it's, if we put all of us together, our experiences and that, that's nobody. How many delegate states do you have in the, in, the, in, the, in the park? Why would I want to disclose that to you? You have River State, for example. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not, if it's River State, I won't run an election. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying I'm, to I'm analyze with you. I'm one aspirant that got across in turn. Look, let me tell you, let me tell you, tell you, you know me very well. I didn't go to Jigawa State to campaign. Why? Well, I, I said I won't go. Why? Well, what's because your reason? What's your reason? The, no, let me tell you. See, you don't go to where that is so uh, antagonistic to you. I said I won't go. That's how I am. I respect the governor of Sokoto State. He's his state. Why do I go and campaign? What for? Well, he's your friend. No, but uh, I should respect him. I didn't, is, go to, is, I, is, I didn't go to Bauchi is, State. He's the only aspirant from the Northwest. Are you losing hope on Northwest? No, I'm going to. That, that's why one of the problems you see. In Kanu, they know that it's my area. I don't want to even tell you so many areas in the Northwest. You know, Nigerians have come to understand that. It's no longer the way it used to be, where you tell people, I'm not, I'm South. Because the problem today is that the Northerners are suffering, the Southerners are suffering. So you don't come and tell me, you are Northerner, you are Southerner. No. Nobody, nobody wants to hear that now. So you're on the ground. You are deeply rooted. But you should know what I've been told. I mean, as a journalist, as a media person. No, there are a lot of yeah. people on the, on the, on the, on no, the list you that know. I know, uh, no, it's that not are not. equally no. uh, as strong. No. In, I mean, no, it's not But that. you have gone around the country. It's not just uh, going around the country. The, you see, what people consider, who is this man? What's his commitment to the party? Who? Amongst all the aspirants. That's more committed to the party than me. Okay, let's go, let's go away from that. In terms of performance, you're a governor. What can you show that you make the party to trust you? To say, look, you've done something that we can say, okay, let's go and take him. Nigerians know he has done something. You and I know I can beat my chest anywhere, any day. To say, look, I've done very well in the university. It doesn't matter whether you hate me or not. So Nobody in this country today, it doesn't matter whether you like me or not, that will deny the fact that, look, this man has done something in the state. So you're saying to the, your PDP, fellow PDP members, that if they give you the ticket, yeah. you can win for the PDP. The, the only aspirant today, I find people confined, that can confront APC, that can face APC, and win the election is me. Not your friend Tambuwa. No. Not Dele Mamadou. No, let us uh, be serious. Uh, you know, I mean, not Atiku Abubakar. Uh, uh, no, I, you see, I respect elders. And, uh, but we're not talking about the elders issue now. Uh, Atiku is an elder. But Atiku knows one man that can win this election for PDP is me. So, but I, w I, I want to restrain myself. I'm very certain that you know the intricacies. Yes. Of defeating an incumbent. incumbent. Yes. Is there, who, who, who's, an incumbent? who's an incumbent? The APC is an incumbent party. Oh, no, we're not talking about Buhari now. We're talking about who they are going to No, no, I'm saying now, if yes. you, I mean, the assurance that you're giving that you are the only one in yes. the PDP at the moment yes. that can defeat the APC. Yes. And I'm asking if yes. you, I mean, your understanding of uh, 
the battle against an incumbent party, mm -hmm. how easy or difficult it is? You know, for me, it's not a question of being difficult. You know, the, the federal government has fought me badly. The federal government has fought me badly, but they didn't win. They didn't win. That's not an election. Who you, 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 you battled the federal government in court. You... It's not court. I'm talking about an election. It's not a question of, you see, na, you see what has happened before will not be what is now. Nigerians, I said, look, we are tired. We can't continue this way. If we continue this way, there will not be country, anything called a country called Nigeria. And so when you begin to look at it from the part of, oh, an incumbent. Okay, if Nigeria chooses that we continue with what we are today, we continue with the poverty and insecurity, so be it. But I don't think the Nigerians I know today will even give one space, one minute, to say APC should continue to run the affairs of this country. I don't think so. All right, uh, Governor Wicked, let me ask you quickly. I'm also congratulations to you because your favorite aspirant in River State, Mr. Fubara, mm -hmm. as a match as a candidate of your party. But it does look like the eyes of the EFCC are on him. Mm -hmm. Does it make you feel uneasy? Which EFCC? Which EFCC? Have you not seen the report about... What? It has no report. But anyway, I don't have any favorite candidate or aspirant. The leadership of the party felt, look, we should take this young man, having seen how he has served, how he has been committed to the party, and his humility, and knowing how government... This government has worked. We think we have to sustain what my administration has done. You know, I laugh, but, but let me tell you today. When people were posting those things about him, that even made me to be more committed. Because it now, it, it now showed that people were just doing those things just because they felt that this young man is the closest person to me. But let me tell you, what happened? Sorry, you get it. In 2016, on that Malami, they came up that, oh, the DFA of River State Government is being investigated. It's not correct. Remember, when the FCC came to investigate the accounts of River State under Dr. Peter Blizz, Dr. Peter Blizz went to court and said, you cannot, you have no such power. The part of the investigation of my of government financial dealing has to do with the state assembly, until the state assembly said, look, yes, you come in, right? Now, under Amechi, the EFC tried it, and said, look, you cannot do that. Yes, EFC went to court of appeal in protocol and got an order to allow them to appeal that judgment. The first government appealed to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court said, no, you cannot. Hold on, you can't do that. As it stands today, EFC does not have any power to investigate the financial dealings of the university government. They have not. Based and on, they know they cannot. Based on the precedence of court. It's not, it is, look, the law is clear. The law is clear. It's not about me. Mm. Even if I live today, mm. another person calls. The issue is, do you have such power? All right. Governor Wiki, I'd like to ask you, you uh, dissolved your cabinet. Yes. But you have not said any reason for dissolution. Is there any reason why I must tell the public why I'm dissolving my cabinet? First of all, I came in 2019. He must who even congratulate me. Mention any state since 2019 that have not dissolved cabinet. Even those who are there, most of them started in 2015. I don't understand why people tell, I'm, I'm leaving. And we're going to politics. Are you, you replacing them? If the cabinet has been dissolved, so what is the issue of whether you're a president? How does it come in? If it dissolves, <laughs> that means people, new people will come in. How soon will that be? That's not your business. <laughs> it is my business. <laughs> I will say that's the problem I have in this country. I, I serve reverse people. You know why it's my business? Because I'm a journalist. No, 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 no. See, <laughs> concentrate. You see, what is it? Uh, what, is, what is it? How soon? You said it's not my business. It, may, it is the business of River State. And as I speak to you, Things are going on. I don't need to come here to say, give me one week, give me two weeks. I owe that duty to River and PDP. 
Do you know that I'm a, I'm, I'm a citizen of every state in this country? I by the virtue of my job. No. So I'm, I'm also interested in everything that happens in this country. Not every state pays their salary. You are paid by Chinese. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is that, yes, we'll let you know. We'll let you know. The point is, it is for you to carry it out. But the point I'm making is that, look, to ask me when, you have to do consultation. Yes, I'm governor. Yeah. I don't do things on my own alone. I need to call mm. the leaders of the state, leaders of the party, and say, look, and then if they bring names, we need to look at these people. Who are they? You don't mm -hmm. just come and say, okay, give me them. Governor, go and announce. No, no way. Uh, Governor, you some wicked. I, I'd like to wish you the very best in your primary. No, I think you should congratulate me. Not yet, no, because we, you no, have no, not no, 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 nobody, no, no, no. <laughs> nobody will win me in this election. <laughs> nobody will win me. I don't know. I, so wish, I wish you the very I, best. No, congratulate me. I can't do that. As a candidate I wish you the very of best. PDP. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how we're going to leave. Thank I you so much for coming. Man. Thank you. That's much. our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Okimale. Bye for now.